early in 2018, I realized that I was an imposter. I was a fraud. So I decided to do something about that. Join me on this live stream today. It's my very last live stream coming to you live from the amazingly beautiful city of York. But before we go there... So thank you. If you could go ahead, I will put the link in the description. If you could go ahead, click on that and like my YouTube channel or actually subscribe to it. I need a hundred subscribers before I can personalize it. And I think now I'm up to about 27. So please go ahead and do that. Oh, and thank you so much for the heart. As I always do here today, I heart you. Now, in Australia, it's Father's Day. So I hope you've had a fabulous Father's Day today. Thank you very much. So what is this about? Being an imposter, what are you talking about, Victoria? Wow. Here in 2014, I wrote this book, How to Make the Rest of Your Life the Best of Your Life, Tough Love for Smart Single Women Over 60. And I realized in early 2018 that, yes, I was an imposter because, quite frankly, I was not living my best life. And that's when I decided to do something about it. During this live stream today, I will share with you three ways that you too can live your dream of traveling and living overseas I'm into my 13th month now. It never was an intention to be away for that long. It's just been how my journey has unfolded. Unfolded, and I'm calling it backpacking solo on a pension. Let's have a look at the first way. So the very first way is for you to look very closely at house sitting. House sitting often involves pet sitting. So if you love pets, then it's win-win because you get to look after some amazing pets. I remember Oscar in Turkey and uh, here where I am now in York, there's an absolutely gorgeous black Labrador called Jonah and he's stunning. So you will be required to look after pets. I'm doing a house sit when I return to Australia and in January of 2020 I shall be looking after three amazing Persian cats. At least one of them is so big you could call him a baby lion. <laughs> so a bit of a high maintenance work there. The seriously look at house sitting. Often you can, the pets aren't involved. You might need to look after plants, look after them. Perhaps people that want you to look after their house is more of a security thing rather than having pets to look after. You need, though, to have your own deal breakers. Now, when I first started over a year ago, I did not know what was important to me around house sitting. But I can tell you, I absolutely know now. I have two deal breakers. The first one is that if the, if the house or the location does not have a good internet connection, then I will not go there because I also am running my internet business as I'm traveling around Europe and Turkey. I cannot do that and I cannot keep up with my commitments of going live. I now podcast as well uh, on anchor.fm, Travel with Victoria Rose, in case you're interested in listening. I'll put that link in the description when I've finished as well. So the first deal breaker is 
there must be a good internet connection. The second deal breaker is if pets are involved, I am not comfortable with having pets sleeping on my bed. So in the bedroom, they have to be out of the bedroom. Now I'll give you an example of what people expect. So here we are looking at a house sit in New Zealand. It's for six months in 2020. Now six months is a long time. It's in a fabulous place in an in New Zealand and I certainly am intrigued by it. The owners have one rescue cat and the rescue cat is certainly king of the house as well. <laughs> one of the things that the hosts want you to do is to allow the rescue cat to sleep on the bed. <sighs> so that's a deal breaker for me. So that is something that I will not do and I make it really clear in Thailand thank you thank you for the thumbs up in Thailand I'm looking after two rescue dogs I'll be doing that for the entire month of October and November and they're just gorgeous dogs I, I can't wait to spend some time with them I made it really clear to the owner that I will not actually allow them into my bedroom although she does she's okay with me not doing that so how could you get into house sitting i recommend that you decide where you want to go and then start searching i am my favorite house sitting site is housecarers.com these guys uh, are an Australian site with a global outreach because they all had that. I did try trusted house sitters in the UK. It wasn't quite a fit for me at housecarers.com. And there's another UK site that I'm on called housesitmatch.com. That's more of a personalized one. You might like to check that out and see how that works for you too. Now, so before I go, so that's the first one, is to uh, do the pet slash house sitting, and that can work really well. And some of them, I oh, I also have a limit. I've discovered on my travels that minimum really is three weeks, preferably four to five weeks, because then that balances out the costs of my travel to travel around Europe and including Turkey uh, to actually do these house sets. So that's how I can do this on an Australian pension. Now, I've had people say to me, come on, Victoria, give us a break. You cannot possibly be traveling and living on a pension overseas. I've done the figures and it doesn't work. <laughs> so my immediate first thought was, what figures did you include when you did your figures? Think about it. You're probably paying rent now or you've got a mortgage or you might be fortunate enough to, as an over 60 still fabulous person to actually own your home or you may not. If you did own your home, you would consider renting it out. Oh, oh, thank you, Chris. Chris just uh, subscribed to my YouTube. Really great. That means I'm one closer to my 100 subscribers. Thank you, Chris. That's very sweet. So um, the point about that is, is that if you own your home, you can rent it out whilst you're away. But what if you don't own your home? Well, you're probably renting or own it yet and you're paying a mortgage. Think about not having that cost to come out of your pension. Think about not having to pay the power bills. Think about not having to pay water or rates. All of those things that are costs that you have to pay when you are actually uh, living in Australia on a pension. Now, here's another thing, your internet costs. My internet cost me a lot of money in Australia and it wasn't very good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and overseas, even in a country like Albania, and I only say that because you wouldn't think Albania would probably have a good internet connection, 
better than Australia, supposedly on the NBN. So they're the costs that you take out of what you are now paying living in Australia on a pension. Trust me, I have the daily costs in each country where I've lived. And sometimes, like in Turkey, I lived in Turkey for three months. In that entire three months, I only paid for three nights accommodation. Wow! <laughs> and not a lot of travel expenses in Turkey because buses there are really cheap, unlike train travel here in the UK. So please seriously consider house sitting because that will create uh, an environment where you will be able to do it on your pension. And I've given you my two favorite house sit sites as well. So that's the first way that you can backpack solo on a pension or travel overseas with a friend on a pension. So the second way that you can save money is to volunteer. There are a number of volunteer platforms, organizations that you can use. The one that I love and I've developed quite a strong profile on now is called workaway.info. There are other sites like Helpex, Woofa. There are so many. Just pop in uh, your search uh, keywords or volunteering abroad and just see what comes up for you. Now, here's the deal with volunteering in other countries. And by the way, in Australia, in New Zealand, it's a global thing. You just have to, again, have your deal breakers and be very, very careful. I'm going to do a whole live stream on what you need to watch out for when you do workaways. For those of you that have followed me, you will know that my first workaway.info or volunteering experience was not good. I called it ugly. <laughs> but the ugly bit taught me what I need to know to diminish, never totally um, uh, stops the fact that you can get caught in a position with your volunteering where you're uncomfortable. Now, what could those uncomfortable things be? There was a, a quite interesting camping volunteering exercise. So what you did was it's in Croatia and what you did was you went along and you helped them build this campsite out in nature and you sleep in teepees possibly or depending on the weather. Sounded really good. One of the beautiful things about Workaway is you look at the reviews and you can contact the volunteer that left the review. So I chose one young woman who'd left a review and I said, look, um, can you tell me anything that you haven't put in your review that me as a single woman traveling should know? And she said that it was a bit uncomfortable with the sleeping arrangements. She had to go through the host's bedroom to get to her bedroom. And also at night, she had to go back through the host's bedroom to go to the toilet. <laughs> so that didn't sit well with me. However, I'm here in York and I came here initially on a volunteer basis with Workaway. And it's been one of my best experiences. I've had great Workaways in Turkey. I had a great Workaway in Spain. So you too can volunteer. One of the things that you need to watch, and I'll do a full live stream on this, is that often they'll say what the maximum hours are. But when you're there, <laughs> oh, look, could you just do this for me? Look, there's this. Now, it's not about watching the clock and the minute it hits a certain number of hours that you've already agreed up front, but it is about not being abused because with a volunteer, you can, you really have to look at 
Am I a volunteer or a servant? And I foolishly allowed myself to slip into the role of being a servant in at least one of my workaway experiences. Now, that will never, ever happen again. And the only way that that's never going to happen again is I allowed it to happen once. And I never read anywhere this information, volunteer or servant, and it really is up to you. So you can go and volunteer in nearly every country in the world and you will commit if it's work away, you will commit maximum five hours every weekday on a variety of tasks. You decide what you're happy doing. I've realized that I no longer want to actually look after babies, be a babysitter or toddlers or any children. That has happened. I've had my life as doing that. I have other skills and talents that I want to share now, which is social media, specifically live streaming and building chatbots for businesses. I don't want to do that other stuff. So I've really narrowed the search down and it looks like I'll be going to Vietnam in 2020 because there are a number of businesses there, actually resorts, right on the beach that could do with the skills that I can offer. So you need to know what you would offer. It could be gardening. It could be restoring a heritage site. It could be renovations. It could be cooking and shopping. What is it that you would like to do? It can be a lot of fun. So that the first thing was pet slash house sitting. The second way that you absolutely can travel and live overseas on a pension is when you volunteer. So do your research, find one that suits you. I personally can recommend workaway.info. But as I've mentioned, there are a lot for you to choose from. So what's the third way? So the third way, oh, I always get caught up with three. The third way I've called other, which is sort of a little bit of a cheat, but oh, under other, because there are so many other ways that you can actually save money, have fun. And one of those ways is called host a sister. If you like to go onto Facebook and search for a group called Host a Sister, it's quite amazing. I've only come across this in the last two weeks, if even that. And the concept is that they only, uh, they're only for those who identify as women. <laughs> I do. I identify as a woman. And what it is, is no money is to change hands. In this group, I mean, a, it's a big group off the top of my head. I can't remember how many are in there now, but it's well in the multiple thousands of members belong to this group. So the idea is that as a member of the group, you can be a guest, you can be a host, uh, or you might just want to meet up with locals when you're in the area. So you advertise and you say, I'm a host. If you're in, I just saw one recently, which is Morocco. If you're in Morocco uh, on these dates, uh, contact me and uh, let's talk about me hosting you. No money is to change hands. On the website, they do say that if you like to give a host gift, then that's fine. And of course, that could be a small token gift of appreciation. But it's not about money. On that site, it's about hosting a sister globally. And it's about a cultural exchange. And there are so many people out there that want to practice their English. That's one of the things that I am doing whilst I'm traveling is uh, uh, talking within conversational English. Okay, I'm an Australian, but apparently it's still okay. <laughs> so there's host a sister, and of course you would already know about couch surfing. So many things are popping up virtually 
every day. That is another way that you can travel overseas. And, and see, the thing is, in when you're in a place like the UK, which is where I am now, it's nothing to pop across the pond. Although that might change on the 31st of October with Brexit. Who knows what's going to happen there? It's a hot, de hotly debated subject here in the United Kingdom at the moment. Thank you for joining me today. My next live stream will be from Evesham in the United Kingdom. I'm traveling there tomorrow and I'm looking forward to looking after a big white fluffy dog called Dougal and two cats. <laughs> and I will absolutely share with you what my experience is like from there. Now, is there something that you would like to know about specifically? Ask the question in the comments. Okay, now I'm going to finish with my a video on subscribing to my YouTube channel and I'll also pop in the um, in the comments a link to get my book on Amazon. It might be something that you could look at buying for one of your girlfriends. You know those friends that do want to travel but just need that little bit of a nudge because Often it's just a lack of confidence in taking that first step, but you can take that first step. Thank you for joining me today. It's been really lovely spending this time with you and I'll finish off with the subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye.